within the midterm month. And I believe if you take today's lecture well, then, then you can get some hints on the midterm problem. Okay, today's topic is functions of several variables. Several variables. So from now, so far we've only studied the function defined on the interval, like a, b, or real value. So so far we only consider the domain as a subset of the real number. So. It contains only one variable, but today we will consider more than one variable. Here, real value function of several independent real variables are similar function. Yeah, okay, the single variable case. Maybe so. This is the definition of the real value function. So here, if we F is defined on D, and here D is a subset of the n tuple. That means n dimensional vector. You can also consider as D. Then it goes to R. So the usual scalar function sends the domain in R to R. And from the next time, uh, by the next time, uh, uh, last time we learned vector valued function, function that is the domain is the, on the subset of R and the function sends the scalar to vector R2 or R3 or general Rn. But today we're studying the function of several variables. It sends n dimensional vector to the scalar vector, as is to the scalar. From the from a generalization, uh, we might learn the function f is defined on R n to R m. Maybe you might learn this kind of function in the linear algebra class. Like if x is a n dimensional vector and m is m by m matrix, then x goes to mx, sends rm vector to the rm vector. So this is the this is the example of this function, but today we only consider this simple function. So here D is the function's domain. And the set of W value is the F's range. Here W is dependent variable and a dependent variable of F and F is the function of independent variable x1 to xn. Since x1 to xn can be chosen independently, so that's why we call it independent variable. So here, uh, if domain is in two dimensional space, that's x, y plane, then we can draw the domain like this, this figure. If one point is given on the domain, then F send these points to the real value. Real, that's a real number, Z. So XY sends to FXY. So the notation is very similar. Now, here is the example of the several variable function. To calculate the Value the variant function for uh, when the when the point is given. For example, if this function is given and point is given as three zero four, then we just substitute three into x zero into y 
4 into z. Then we calculate this to get 5. The meaning of this f is the this f is given on defined on the three dimensional space and this f the meaning of this f is the distance from the origin this distance is square root of x square plus y square plus z square and this is f x y z we just use the Pythagorean theorem to get to get it okay here domain and range if function f is given as by a formula and no domain is specified then the domain f is understood to be the set of all points for which the given expression is where to find real number. Okay, let's see the example. Uh, for the problem A. In this example, we should find the domain and range. Since there is a square root, y minus x square should be non-negative. That means is it is greater or equal than zero. So we get this inequality. And if you draw the domain, then there is y equal x square. Since y is greater than x square, here is the domain. There is the domain. Or you can denote the domain as D, like this form, X, Y, where Y is greater than X square. Maybe You can write this form. For this domain, y minus x square can be any, any non-negative value. So square root of y minus x square can be any non-negative value. So this implies the range of this function is non-negative real number. We can denote it like this. The second question. One over x y. Since nominator is x y cannot be zero, so x is not zero and y is not zero. So if you draw the domain on the x y plane x equal y is x equal zero is y axis and y equal zero is x axis so we should remove x axis and y axis from this x y plane so in this case, the domain is x, y in R2 and x is non-zero and y is non-zero. If x and y are non-zero, then x, y can be any non-zero variable. That means one over x, y also can be any variable except zero. So the range is uh, real number minus zero. This is the set. So, so or we can express this as the union of 
these two intervals. Okay, next one is B for sine x, y. Since any real number can be take the sine function in here, so the domain is for x, y plane, since x and y can be any real number. However, the range is closed interval starts from minus one and finish at one because the range of sine is minus one and one. Okay, here's the first example. And here is the three variable examples. Let's also consider this example. Here, the A. Since there is a square root, x squared plus y squared plus z squared should be non-negative. However, for any real numbers, x and y and z satisfy this condition. So the domain of this function is R3. Since x, y, and z can take any value. Also, the range is since, since x squared plus y squared plus z squared can take any non-negative real number, so the range of this function is any non-zero number. Similarly, the second case, x squared plus y squared plus z squared cannot be zero, cannot be zero. So actually, you might know that if x squared plus y squared plus z squared is zero and x and y and z are real number, then square of real number is non negative. So each square should be zero. So x, y, z are zero. So the domain is R3 minus origin. Origin is zero, zero, zero. Since x, x squared plus y squared plus z squared cannot be zero and it has positive value, so the range is zero to infinity, any positive number. The last one, double equal x, y, low, z. Actually here, X and Y can take any real number, but for Z, Z should be positive. So we can express the domain as this form, X, Y, Z are in, this pair is in R3, and X, Y can take any real number, but <coughs> Z should be the negative. Actually, we can remove. We can remove this condition. Uh, sorry. Uh, something wrong. Okay. Here, domain is x, y, z in R three, and x, y. x, y can take any real number and z is positive. Actually, there is a already say x and y are in real number, so we can remove this condition. So we can also write down simpler form. This is R3 and z is positive number. Any question? So good. And now let me explain 
more complicated example. You might know why am I introducing this example. Or minus x squared minus y squared plus x squared plus y squared. We want to find the domain of this function. Then we should have for minus x squared minus y squared should be non negative, and x squared plus y squared should be non negative. Then we have uh, we have this inequality. So this is the domain of the of this function. So we can express domain x y in R two such that x square plus y square is in this interval. If we express this domain on the R x y plane is of course the disk with radius 2. And this disk contains the boundary because x squared plus y squared can be four. Now we'll find the range of this function. To find the range of this function, we should uh, use some technique of the differentiation. First, we substitute since since x square root of x square plus y square is r, and this r is the distance from the origin. So we substitute this variable, then gr is square root of 4 minus r square plus square root r square. And r is greater or equal than 0 and less or equal than 2. Finding the range of f is equivalent to find the range of g with this domain. Okay, so we can rewrite this function as this form since r is non negative Square root of r squared is r. To find the maximum or extremum of gr, we calculate the differentiation of g to get uh, 2, 4 minus r squared minus 2r plus 1, and this is minus r over r squared plus 1. So to find the extrema, we should find r, which satisfies g prime r is zero. So we get r over square root of four minus r square is one. And this is r equals square root of four minus r square. And this is r square equal four minus r square. And we get r square equal two and r is plus minus square root of two. However, the domain of R is greater or equal than zero, and we said or equal than two. With the only R satisfying G prime R in domain is R equals square root of two. So finding the maximum and minimum of G R, because we want to find the range of G, so we should find the maximum and minimum. We should check the boundary value G0 and G2 and uh, this G square root of 2. If we put 0, then we get 2. If we put 2, then we also get 2. But if we put G uh, square root of 2, then we get 2 square root of 2. So the minimum of G is 2 and the maximum of G is 2 square root of 2. So the range is 
two 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 square two. Any question? So if there is a same structure in the same structure in the function, then we can reduce the several variable function to the real variable function, real variable function divided on the real number. Then it is easy to calculate the domain and the range. Okay, then let's discuss about this later more. more. Uh, now, let me introduce the graph and the level curve and the function of two variables here. To express the function f x comma y, we can use the graph. If we Okay, here F is defined on domain D, and this domain is a subset of R2, and it goes to R. So the pair X comma Y goes to F X comma Y. To visualize this relationship, we draw the relationship Z equal F X Y in R3. For example, here, this is the definition of the graph. When two variables, the functions of two variables is given, then we can draw, we can extend this X and Y and we, we put X comma Y at f x comma y in the z to obtain this graph. So this means uh, this plane is x y plane, and this d is the domain defined on the given on the x y plane. So we can choose the point on d. We can choose the point on d. Then the corresponding point on the graph is x y. F x comma y. Most of case, this F is this graph forms a surface because we have three variables. We have three variables, and there is one restriction. That's the the one restriction is F z for F x y. So the demand so, so three minus one is two. Three minus one is two. This is number of variables. This is the number of equation. Then this is the number of really kind of free variable. Maybe you've learned in the in algebra. So this is the two-dimensional object. That's the surface in the three-dimensional object. Okay, so if you draw the graph, then you can obtain the surface in the three dimensional space. Okay, here is the definition of level curve. Level curve. The definition of level curve is given by this f x y equal c. If the variable function is constant, then we call it the level curve. Maybe we can take some example for this level curve. Uh, we consider f x y equal square root of x square plus y square. As I said, uh, this function is a distance from origin to point x comma y. This is the distance. So if f x comma y is c and c is greater than zero, then the level curve of then this level curve is the circle with radius c and origin is the center. So if f is constant, then this is the level curve. 
Maybe we can, we can approach in a, in a different way. Uh, we, we just learned this equation, z equal f x comma y is the equation of this surface, this is this graph. So the equation of this graph is f x comma y equals z. f x comma y equals z means it has constant value of z. That means z equals c. This is the graph and this is the plane which is parallel to the xy plane. So if c is 45, then z equal 45 is this plane, which is parallel to the xy plane. And the intersection of this graph and this plane is this curve. So we can also consider that f x comma y equals z and z equals c. This is graph and this is plane. We can consider uh, the intersection of this surfaces is level curve. We can remove Z by substituting Z, C into Z. So this is why this, uh, this F, X, comma, Y, C is the equation of the level curve. Okay, now let's see the example, next example. Here's the function, it's given as 100 minus x squared minus y squared. x, y, z. The maximum of this function is 100 and the, when x and y are zero and you can easily get, you can easily get this paraboloid is the graph. Of this function. Okay, plot the level curve f x comma y equal zero and fifty one and seventy five. Here, actually, we can explicitly solve the equation of x and y, but for the intuition, we choose the plane C equals 75. Then the intersection between this plane and the graph is this circle, this circle. And again, since X, Y plane is Z equal zero, we know that this curve is f equal zero and this is f equal 75 and we can also solve it algebraically if f is zero we can we get 100 minus x square minus y square equal zero so we get x square plus y square equal 100 that's the radius 10 circle and if f is 51, similarly, we get x square plus y square is square of seven. If f is 75, x square plus y square is square of five. So we get these three circles from 
the library card formula. Okay. Before we go to the three dimensional graph, record the previous example f x comma y is defined by four minus x square minus y square plus square root of x square plus y square. As we have studied, the domain is domain satisfies x square plus y square is greater or equal than zero and is least or equal than four. Now we want to calculate the level curve f x comma y equal one plus square root of three. And record that the range is two to square root of two. Before we draw the level curve, we should check that this value, one plus square root of three is in the range. If, 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 this, if one plus square root, of, square root of three is not in the range, then the level curve should be the empty set because there is no X and Y, which is satisfying that equality. So, but, but we have, we can solve this inequality easily. So now we will calculate the level curve of this function. This function is this value, one plus square root of three. <clears throat> Similarly, we substitute R as square root of x square plus y square, then we have gr, here is square root of four minus r square plus r, and r is greater or equal than zero and this or equal than two. So we should find r, which is satisfies R equal one plus square root of three. Then we got is one plus square root of three minus R. And then we got one plus square root of three square minus two, one plus square root of three R plus R square. Then we got zero equal two r square minus two one plus square root of r plus one plus square root of three square minus four. Since this is two square root of three, we get r square minus one plus square root of three r plus square root of three. And we can easily factorize this to get r minus square root of three. So we get r equal one or r equal square root of three. Since the domain of r is greater or equal than zero and less or equal than two, so both r, one and square root of three are in the domain. So the level set f x comma y equal one plus square root of three is equivalent to square root of x square plus y square is one or square root of three. If you draw this result in on the x y plane, x and y, this equation is the circle with radius one and this relation is the circle with the radius square root of three. So the level curve of this case is consisting two circles, two 
which is they are sharing the center origin and the radius is one and stereotype three respectively. So please remind this example for your midterm one. Now let's go on to the function of three variables. Okay, here we have draw we have drawn the f two variable function of two variables d from r two to r if x comma y goes to f x comma y we visualize this function as x y f x y however if three function of three variables is given then this kinds of extension is impossible because we cannot see the higher dimensional object than higher than three dimensional object. So in this case, we can or we can only study the level surface. This is the the level surface definition of level surface is f x y z equals c. So here level curve is f x comma y equals c and level surface is f x y z equals c actually if f is defined on r3 to r and f x y z is square root of x square plus y square plus g square and the level surface is given as f x comma y comma z is zero then the only solution of square root of x square plus y square plus g square is the origin so it is not a surface so sometimes we should call this level curve and level surface as another name. If we call them as level set, not a level curve or level surface, we, if we just call it level set, then we can remove this ambiguity. So actually level curve and the level surface are special cases of level set. Okay, here describe the level surface of the function. Okay, here the domain is R3. X, Y, Z can take any values, any real values. And range is any real number or zero. Okay, so let's see the level surface f x y z is c if c is zero uh, if c is negative then level surface is empty set level surface is empty set sometimes we call this level level set or level surface or level curve but using by using this notation f inverse c F inverse C is not a actually inverse function because, because we don't know the one-to-one uh, -one correspondence. But the definition of F inverse C is the set of X, Y, Z in domain, which satisfies F X comma Y comma Z is C. So this is the level set of f with value c so in this case f inverse c is the empty set because there is no such x y z if c is zero then f inverse c is the origin zero 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 if c is positive 
the this is the spear. This is another board. Spear share only only the share of the spear. F inverse C is the spear with radius R at the origin. Okay, so we can classify this level curve easily because this is just the distance from the origin. Okay, uh, the remaining part is wrapping with computer, but we'll omit this part. Okay, we have seven more minutes, but we finish our sections will be covered by midterm one. Okay, any question? Then we have the, okay, let me explain about the midterm test. We have six problem and each problem contains two sub problem, but I believe they are not very hard calculation and you can use calculator and yeah, total 60 points. Uh, it's 50 minutes. Any more questions on the meter? Yes. Okay, then we'll study section 12.2 next Monday, but this is not a part of the meter month. And okay, then see you next Monday. If you have any questions, please come and ask me.